Like Silent Hill 2 is like like baby's first Silent Hill. You said, well, everyone says it's fun with a friend, and that's literally it. Every People who tell me they like Resident Evil 5, you're wrong. That game is terrible. It's ass. It's garbage. It's doo doo. It's that stuff that comes out of your butthole. It's shit. Number two, it is a garbage game. Stop buying video games on day one. Stop buying them on yep. day one launch because these games are most likely buggy as all hell. Sir does the same thing where you can, like, Steam, you purchase something on Steam and then you try to open it and it's like, oh no, you need this other third party launcher. And it's like, what? In earlier, with, in Resident Evil 1, where Chris laughs at Wesker and he's like, Wesker's like, Chris, stop it. Joined by the illustrious, smart, and laid back. Kelsey Fearless. Oh. Hi everyone. How are we doing today? I hope everyone, How is everyone today? I hope everyone is doing well. Good morning, good afternoon, good night to everyone around the world. I am your favorite tired neighborhood beard bro, Mr. Kennedy. And I am joined once again by the beautiful, illustrious, laid back, smart Kelsey Fearless. How Thank are you? you, Ken. Great to be here. I am great. How are you today? A little tired, huh? Yeah, it's uh it's it's getting towards the holidays, so everybody's flying in to see their families and stuff like that and all that. Oh yeah, of course, of course they are, of course, right? Yeah. yeah. Everybody's coming in, and you know, everybody got the the snotty attitudes. You know, just oh right. My God, you just let me in here. I don't. I I pay your paycheck. I'm like, you can go to another gate, lady. <laughs> I don't gotta right? let you in. Right? Yeah. Like, get along, get along, because, yeah, that's airport, right? No, um, I work in a, like, it's or a, what? like a house community. Like, it's like a big house, big oh, house community. Oh, did you do airport? Yes, I did. Did you do airport? That's why I'm mixing up. Okay, so you're more like a gated um, guard, right? Yeah, okay. All I've right. done I've done every type of security that there is with yeah, the exception of I hospital. I was going to say, I wouldn't want to do hospital. Uh, I wouldn't want to do hospital. But yes, sick I sick people mean. I hope Anyways, everybody is doing well. Welcome to episode 13 of the Hot Takes podcast. We got a lot for y'all today, and uh, we're all over the place, but we will give you a great show, anyways, because that's what we do. Exactly. 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 We will. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We, uh, and we will start. Yeah. With, we will start with the foolishness fallout. What's yeah. that? The, holy crap. I was going to say, there's a, there's a lot. There's a lot here. <laughs> yes. Bethesda with their, with their $1,799 Fallout 76 bundle that they are charging everybody. Let that sink in. Yep. $1,799. And it's, that's on sale, folks, because the original... That's thing, on sale. Yeah, the the original price is two thousand dollars. I mean, huzzah! Wouldn't you like to spend seventeen hundred dollars for like cosmetics in a game? Right, obviously. Oh my god! And I, I love how this art, uh, I love how this article is trolling the hell out of Bethesda too. <laughs> it's like it's not even Black Friday yet, and Bethesda just dropped the hottest deal of the Xbox Game Pass subscribers. The general persona uh, bundle is seventeen hundred and ninety nine dollars. Yes, that's a whopping two hundred dollars off. Y'all can go to hell with good that. Good deal. Stuff. That's yep. a great deal, Ken. What are you talking about? That's a great deal. Yeah, and, and it's like sure. Seventeen hundred can buy you a decent car, which it damn sure could, and they could pay a lot of rent and give me a whole hell of a lot of hamburgers. There's a lot of things that Oh, I, a lot of hamburgers. No, it's it's ridiculous, and it's like all you get, all you get for this is, uh, you get uh, a general uniform, a thousand atoms, and a couple of cosmetics for seventeen hundred dollars. For seventeen hundred dollars, you better you, you better give me a twenty-four karat solid gold Xbox that cooks me. There, yeah, there's a lot I can do with seventeen hundred dollars. Yeah, these guys are crazy. Like, how the hell, like, were they drinking when they were sitting in these meetings and stuff? Just like, you know what we should do? Oh. 
Get the hell like, out that's, of here. That, no, like, that's so real. And that's just, actually, Etsy on chat said, part of me wonders if Bethesda does stuff like this on purpose. Just get free media coverage. Possibly, but, like, can we also remember the fucking... Was this not with... Which Fallout release was it? Was it 76 where there was, like, a collector's edition and they said it was going to be, like, a canvas bag? I can't remember. But the bag wasn't even canvas. Fallout 76, again, where they released it and you bought just the case. There's no CD in the case. Like... <laughs> But that's the I, I feel like I yeah, I feel like I feel like Fallout seventy six is where Bethesda like channels all their evil into it just so they can, you know. Yeah, this is this yeah. is what this is what you get. A thousand uh atoms plus five hundred dollar bonus rev revolutionary general uniform. You get the three repair kits, three scrap hit, uh kits, and bragging rights. <laughs> and bragging <laughs> rights. <laughs> Oh, I love you know what article, I mean? Man. Yeah, it's bullshit, man. Anybody and you know that there will be some dumb idiot, you know, rich McDouchebag out there that will buy it anyways, just so he can show off to his friends. Oh, of course. Yeah, of course. No disrespect, yeah, y'all, but that's the, but, you know, collector's edition, all this stuff. Y'all can collect my size 19 boot in your asses. If you yeah. think, collect this. You know, if you think that right. I mean, just seventeen hundred dollars. Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> like these games, they going crazy with this stuff. And that's it's not even like Fallout 76 is a new game. Even if isn't that an old ass game? It and it's at and yeah, and it's at like the bottom tier of Fallout games. Like so, I'm sorry, Fallout 76 is the worst Fallout game. Like, it's bottom of the barrel compared to all the other Fallout games. Like, I, I'm sure they updated it, but, like, when, even like even when it first came out, like, I know people play it. It's just, like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's just, it's the worst Fallout. It, it's the worst Fallout. It reminds me of when, uh, when Resident, the original Resident Evil 4 first came out. Remember when they were, uh... Like they were selling a collector's edition with the uh, with the chainsaw controller and like a authentic leather Leon jacket, oh. which which wasn't really leather. And they were selling that jump for like four hundred, yeah. five hundred bucks for the GameCube. And I'm like, that's not even real. That's not even real leather. It's pleather, man. Exactly. It's not even real. It's not even real. Like it, it's nasty. <laughs> It's and, nasty. And you just know, like, just like when they were putting up the, remember the, uh, remember the cardboard cutouts of, like, the, the, um, what was it, the Nintendo Wii U controllers, and people were buying that stuff for, like, hundreds of dollars on, on eBay. Oh, yeah. I remember. I remember. Yeah, just, I remember. Just dumb. If y'all spend money on that stuff, take that money and do something else with it. Go invest it in some and some dog food or something, you'll probably get your money back for that one. You know, don't freaking go and right? buy, buy this bullshit. Cosmetics, anybody that spends that amount of money for cosmetics, whether it's Fortnite, whether it's, it's Dead by Daylight, or any of these gotcha games, you are a dumb idiot. And you need to have your bank account oh, yeah. taken away from you. You need to have your cards cut up and never used again. Your parents need to say, you got a problem. Stop buying this garbage. Go yeah. buy go buy some clothes, man. Oh, exactly. Exactly. You exactly. Know, it's ridiculous, man. Yeah, but that's in their BS. Anyways, though, since we're on the subject of BS, let's talk about Nintendo. Huzzah. Oh People. boy, Nintendo. I am having connection issues, just a heads up. <laughs> it's but we can keep going. You're still here. Like I don't see any any yep. issues on my end. But yep, I'll toss them at you if it does, and we'll keep going. Keep going. No issues. Let me see, real quick, because I I have your stream up here. Let me see. Hey, well, if it's lagging, I can just. Uh... You're all right. All right. Um. Anyways, it... let's let's move on here. Okay, that's good. Nintendo is is suing. They're suing the uh the game. Uh, what is it? Power World. 
the power world developers. Power world, yes. For you know, yes. for, for copyright infringe, uh, for patent infringements, they're claiming that their game Power World is like Pokemon with guns. Now I've never seen. Yep, this. yep, I remember that. I've never seen this game before, but I have keep I have kept up with the with the story because it's Dick Tendo. You know how it is. Yeah. That that spoiled brat in the sandbox that don't want anybody else to have their toys. Oh, exactly, exactly. This is like massive, though. This is actually like massive. Yeah. It Honestly, is. like it's this one is kind of massive, uh, especially just like. Man, no one, you can go ahead and read it, but like, it's actually, no one's ever like stood up like this. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, it says that the, the company filed a lawsuit. This was back on September 18th, an injunction against the infringement and compensation for damages on the grounds that, that Power World, a game developed and released by defendant, infringes multiple patent rights. It says Nintendo will continue to take necessary actions against any infringement of its intellectual properties, property rights, including Nintendo brands itself. So basically, they think that Power World is basically copying them, plagiarizing them. As if there's, yep. as if there's, of course they do. As if there's no other franchises that have, you know, have taken the ideas. Like remember Card Captors, remember Yu Gi Oh, remember Digimon. Digimon. I yeah, just, I just seen. Oh Nintendo, yeah, there's tons. I just seen Nintendo going, going crazy like that. What are they gonna sue? Yeah. They're gonna sue Monster Hunter, Monster Hunter next Capcom, claiming that the, yeah. the, the dinosaurs yeah. are pets. Oh my God, they're copying us. It's ridiculous. Oh yeah, man. no, it, it it's real. No, like it's absolutely crazy. And one of the things that's like insane to me is that. Like they're they're gonna fight it. I believe I saw oh I wish I had got in a follow up article, but yeah, I believe like they're gonna they're gonna go against them. And that's actually crazy because Nintendo's like Nintendo's tactic is to throw so much fuck you money at lawyers that like you like you the average person can't go against that, right? Like you but like if this gets fought, like, and the, uh, the reason why Nintendo and a lot of other companies do that is because if this actually went to court, if something like this actually went to court, and the judge ruled in favor of the creators of Power World, that sets a precedent that fucks over every other video game company, right? Like, sure. they no longer can have an avenue to just, like, they... You, that's a huge reason, but I I just think it's cool that they're actually taking this to court. Yeah, what 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 is not cool is that the uh, pocket pair community man manager said that they received death threats from fans over the backlash, and I'm yeah, like, that's not cool. I'm like, okay, so it, here's the brain rot that comes out and just embarrasses embarrasses right. all gamers. Death threat, you know, like I said, you would think like they like Nintendo pays their paycheck or something. Like, why are you threatening these people? Yep. You know, exactly. You got exactly. I, you got some of the biggest games out there, like Fortnite, even copied a, another game before that. You know, every game, you know, in the, in this day and age, every game like has an idea that came before it. You know, that's just exactly. Like, that's just like, you know people from the alone in the dark series to get pissed off at capcom because they did resident evil like it's it, yeah like, exactly and for people for people from resident evil to be like oh you know well silent hill is copying these guys i'm like no they're not it's their own thing they well kind of they did well yeah i mean i, I didn't want to uh, they kind of did but like at the same time it's so different right they took the very like they took the basis of Resident Evil, but it's so different. It's so different to the point that, like, Resident Evil versus Silent Hill fandom was, like, a real thing. You know, you were either one or the other. That's why I never got into Resident Evil until I was older, because it was, like, they were different, right? But, it, but like, if they had more power back then, and Capcom could have been, 
you know, it could have been fought. Capcom could have patented, like, I'll get to another point, but Capcom could have just, like, been an asshole and gotten ahead of it and tried to find a way to patent, like, the survival horror gameplay, right? Like, I don't, I'm guessing that's not allowed. But, mm -hmm. like, laws for, I know um, there are some, what's the, what's that game for GameCube where it has the sanity meter and it, it has effects? Isn't that Fatal Frame? I forget what that game is. No, it's not Fatal Frame. Uh, I'm trying to remember. Requiem. Sandy's Requiem. Yes, I believe. Who's that? Nintendo? Yeah, GameCube. Uh, the Sanity system was actually patented. I think it's Nintendo, right? Like, they actually made... Like, the Sandy system in that game was actually patented. Uh, Isn't that fucking wild? Yeah. Isn't I mean, that fucking wild? I think that when you're making any type of type type of media, like ideas should be for everyone. Like you protect your properties, but you can't be like, oh, you know, you can't try your hand at this genre because we have games in this genre. Like everybody has the right to make yeah. whatever games that they want, unless they're not blatantly copying something like, you know, word for word. Yeah. Yo, that's just, I mean, like yeah, I exactly. said, that's just like Fire Pro fans, you know, uh, Human Interactive just to sue WWE or 2K because it's another wrestling game. I'm like, come yeah, on, man. Yeah, exactly. You know, and of exactly. course, uh, Tokyo Road, the, uh, the boss of uh, Pocket Pair, he said, you know, he said, of course, I love Pokemon. I respect it. I grew up with it in my generation. So he may have taken inspiration from Pokemon to to create his own game. I don't see what's wrong with that. You know, if you look yeah. at if no. you look at I will give you a perfect example, Akira Toriyama. Uh the creator of Dragon Ball Dr. Slump. Dragon Ball is full of ideas from movies and from shows. Like the the artificial human arc, the constant Tai Setu arc, perfect self. All of that stuff clearly came from the Terminator series. You know, androids yeah. being created to, to destroy mankind. You know, you, you got different ideas. And it's like, I, I just don't see why Nintendo was so tight-fisted about every damn thing. I have no clue. I I honestly have no clue. I I feel like that's something I would would be cool to actually read into. Because I know, like, a big thing. They were very, very, very... When they wanted to be, like, super family-friendly... I know that they were very, very protective, but now I have no idea. I'm just going to say greed. Like, when you have one of the biggest franchises in the world, I'm just going to say that's greed at yeah. this point. I mean, it's it's just all it's doing is just turning people against Nintendo if it, if it hasn't already happened. Because it's like, come on, man, just leave these people alone. Don't y'all got anything better to do? Which allows they, right? they they kind of like the PETA of video games. Oh like, my God! Right? They, they just find just find something to get butt hurt about. They run out of preparation H, and then they want to attack everybody and sue everybody. Right? Right? Oh my gosh! Emulating the soldier in chat said petition to change Nintendo's name to Nintendo Sue. Nintendo <laughs> Sue. That's so funny. It really is. Like, it's crazy. It's crazy. And that's why, again, like, I really hope, like, the like the creators of power fight this. Because it, it's for, like, yeah, it's going to be horrible. Like, Nintendo's going to bully them at every chance they can get to try and get them to drop it. But if they do get through and they do win it, then, yeah, Nintendo, like, actually all game like, we'll be seeing... It's just like, yeah, we need laws like this. There's not as many laws for video games, right? Not really, because people don't really think about that stuff. Honestly speaking, you know, I'm not trying to be cynical. I just don't see these guys beating Nintendo because Nintendo has all the money. They have all more money. And, you know, like, I'm not taking Nintendo's side because they're a bunch of dicks. But the game does resemble Pokemon. Like it does resemble their property, yeah. so I, I don't really see these guys win in this case. I think that the worst thing that's going to happen yeah. is they're going to settle out of court. 
Yeah, but I I don't know though. Like we'll see, yeah, because they're gonna they're gonna be bled dry. Like yeah. they're gonna be bled for every cent they take, right? Like they probably will, but honestly, I think best case scenario, Naughty and Settle of Court, they'll well, they will settle of court, but they'll probably just agree to like take out and change some designs. Yeah, they'll probably have to, to revamp because fines. I just see Nintendo dragging this stuff out until they no longer have any more. The other company doesn't have any more money, and then what do you do after that? Exactly. Exactly. That's that's literally how it goes. That's how it goes. And and the people who get screwed in this is the fans because it's like you know you're eliminating a game that a lot of people like. Now I've never played it. I have seen it. You know when you're on Twitch and stuff, but it's like, you know, let people enjoy the game. That's all I'm saying. Why why do y'all gotta be like, oh, we gotta be butt hurt just for the hell of it. Exactly. You exactly. Know? Like I said, exactly. well, it's, they're like the like I said, they're like the PETA video games because PETA would attack every franchise, Super Mario. They would Oh sp- right. Remember when they were spending all their money on on making like a Mario game where Mario's killing all these animals and stuff. Yeah, or or the Pokemon one where you're literally like dog fighting and the Pokemon are like sad and you know like oh yeah, I remember that. I'm like, I remember that. I'm like, why are these shit biscuits? Why do they have the, all this money to do nothing with? <laughs> you know, yeah, it, it's just funny. But I hope y'all. I'm rooting for uh. For the other guys to win, yeah, I'm really rooting for them to win, but I I just don't see it happening. What, uh, juggernaut like Nintendo? Yeah. You know, so either, yeah, I don't. So either one or two things is gonna happen. Either they're gonna have to change the game, or they're gonna have it taken down and canceled. Which I really don't want. Yeah. But it wouldn't. No. Be, it wouldn't be the first time that Nintendo has done that. Oh, Nintendo's done so much. Nintendo has taken down like fifty million things. Like yeah. you could, you could, you could have like, honestly, you could have an Italian man in a red plumbing suit, and no, no other mention. And Nintendo would swoop down. They probably like have this copter come down, and they take, and that Italian man, like they, they drop a net and grab him and airlift him because now he's evidence. Taking them all the way to Japan, the poor dudes over the sea, like in this net. Like, what is going on? You know, you, you know what? I that that just gives me like a, a picture in my head. Like, imagine around Halloween time where people are dressed as Nintendo characters, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, right? Like, they go home and see like see like a freaking a subpoena in their in their uh, their mailbox. You're being sued. Yeah, for, exactly. For copying Super Mario or Yoshi. Or yeah, Samus. exactly. It's ridiculous, man. Anyways, the, <laughs> just to tell you. Anywho. Uh, Nintendo. It's always like uh, Igor said, yeah, it's always bad news with Nintendo because Nintendo is not doing anything good these days. Yeah. When was the last time I had they, any... They any, really aren't. They really aren't. They yeah, really when, aren't. When was the last time I, I had any good news about Nintendo? I've been doing, we did 13 episodes of this, and everything that's been about Nintendo has been bad because they're assholes. They're greedy. Yeah. When was the last time? Actually, yeah. When I'm trying to think. Yeah. I'm, tr- I'm like, I might think on when was the last time that Nintendo actually did something good? Uh, I can't even really think. Can't even really think. And that's bad because Nintendo, I mean, even though they were greedy bastards back in the day when I was growing up. They weren't this bad. That's just like they're starving. No, they for weren't. These companies are starving no, for they attention. Weren't. That's what they are. They want attention. You know, the spotlight is yeah. not is not on them. Same thing with Sony. Same thing with Microsoft. So they do dumb shit like this just to get people. Yeah, talking. exactly. Anyways, and they though. have so much power at this point. Anyways, continuing on. Actually, speaking of power. <laughs> Yeah, let's talk yeah. about let's talk about this whole. I don't know how to pronounce her name, but it's like Anna Perna. Is that how it's pronounced? Oh, Anna Perna video game team. Yeah, I think it's Anna. Pur- what is it? Anna Perna or Anna Purna? Anyways, 
we we got this. Let's just can we'll get it. Yeah, the only the only thing that's bad about a bad video game company is a company that loses their whole entire development team. Yeah. Yep. And it is insane. It says that the this is back on September twelfth that the entire Annapurna Interactive, the video game publishing division of Megan Ellison. It says that they all retired. You're talking about all 25 members all collectively yep. resigned. Yeah. And I, when I read that, I was like, wow, what the hell happened? This is one of the hardest. You know who Megan Ellison is, right? No, I don't. You're going to have to educate me. She's the daughter of Larry Ellison. Larry Ellison created Oracle. You know, like Oracle Java. Like, there's so many Oracle products we use. Like huge, and this is this is nepotism at its finest because her father is like top, you know, top in the tech industry, you know. And I'm like, when I saw who she was, I laughed because I'm like, oh my god, like she she's just this rich girl, like trying to like with no bit like it. It happens all the time. You see this all the time now, especially especially now that like all the billionaires that they've had kids and they're growing up. You can see the Nevo babies and they're in these they're put in these positions and they have no right to be doing them, right? Like leading a whole team and shit, like I guarantee you ha like she got propped up because her father is Larry Ellison. Right, like, think of it, um, you know, oh my god, Etsy in chat, Oracle, one rich asshole called Larry Ellison, that's actually perfect, but yeah, like, it's nepotism at its finest, so I would bet she was probably a nightmare to work with, just a spoiled brat, like, oof, anyways. I mean, it's just, I know for a fact that they... You know, they couldn't reach an agreement. That's why they all walked out. No. Like, like the, But you uh, know that's bad. Yes, it is. When your whole entire team, and they just sold, because this ties to the next one, they had to, in order to acquire the Alan Wake and Control films for television, the rights were, were acquired by Anna Perna in exchange for financial half of Control 2, which is coming up. Yeah, yeah. So they, oh my gosh, they really had to scramble because, like I said, when you're when your whole entire team walks out on you, and like I said, it says that, um, it says that we're committed to existing uh, slate of games, in other words, it's probably you know, Island Wake and Control and all of that stuff that they when they working on that, you know, the uh, mm -hmm. the remaster of Island Wake, the Island Wake games, the Max Payne games, and Control 2, which is supposed to be coming out. So this is the absolute worst time for your team to just be like, you know what? And I there's and I guarantee it's, it's so, it such so, a fumble. I guarantee it was over money. I guarantee it. Oh, and you know it was. You know it was, and that's what I that's what I mean though. Like it it's one like you know that must be an absolute nightmare to work with if it's over money, but like when everyone's walking out at once and it, it's because you can't reach an agreement like that, like that, I can't imagine the shit show. I really, I'm kind of, I'm interested in like watching this and like, because I want to eventually get to, uh, like I want to eventually get to the, um, what man, what's the word when people start, dishing out the dirt like i want to know what how bad it was well, because it, it's one thing when you can't reach an agreement but usually you know it happens all the time with strikes usually they reach an agreement but everyone just walking out like i need to know i need to know <laughs> well it's it's probably like i said it's, it's definitely over money most of the time like i can pretty much do an educated guess probably on oh, yeah. ungodly hours for a little pay and, you know, oh, yeah. when you're working under a spoiled brat like that, you know she was probably a shitty boss. Oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. My dad told me not to judge pe not to judge a book by its cover, but looking at this woman's picture, she definitely looks like a, a douche nugget. Yeah. <laughs> like she Does she? 
She definitely does she? She definitely looks oh, like do. she looks like she uh oh. like she just tortures these people, man. Oh yeah. I've I've worked for a Nepo baby. I worked for a Nepo baby and oh my god, his father had to like tell him a couple times, like, go home. Yeah, it's like, so uh, you know you know what I mean like you know it's bad when your father who is trying to give you the business it's like go home like, <laughs> uh, yeah so I believe probably an absolute spoiled brat yeah the, the new president uh, Hector Sanchez said he said he told the developers that they were honor existing contracts and replace whatever staff left the company now my question is this um while they're scram scrambling to find people, that's probably going to put delays on these games, you know? Yeah, but it, it's I, cheaper to hire people. It's cheaper to hire a team at one set price than renegotiate with uh, everyone else. Well, I that's, just, that's one of those slimy things. Like, that's what they're going to do. They're literally going to hire another team, probably at a cheaper pay than what the other team did. So they're, they're probably going to go the outsource route where they outsource yeah. it and have people who have no idea what the game is and what these games yeah. are about work on these games. And, and that, that scares me because remember when Silent Hill did that? Yep. And we ended, yep. we ended up with Homecoming and we ended up with Shattered yep. Memories and all the other bullshit, boring ass games. Exactly. Yep, exactly. Exactly. Or it's just going to be given to a bunch of unskilled people and we're going to end up with like unoptimized unplayable bullshit of a good title right that's the other side of it is i've been seeing that you can tell like you can tell because a lot like now a lot of publishers are outsourcing to just like these random studios <laughs> bloober um but it's you know and but it's like, man, you used to produce quality, and now you're giving it to not the A team or the B team, but the C team. You know, like the C team, the people that are the people that are just you know yeah. waiting around. And this thing that sucks is like my my excitement level for Control Two has dropped significantly because yeah, I don't trust it. It's like, what do you do? Yeah. When, when, I mean, number one, you wasted all of these people's time who sweat. I used to work for EA, so I, I watch how hard these people work on these games. Laugh. I mean, yeah. you, got, you guys can laugh, but I watch people work 12, 13, 14 hours in front of a screen just trying to get one section of a game to work. So it's like, you know, and I, I think that the tide is turning with these with the video game companies and the people who work for them. I think that they're just getting tired because it the update on the remember the uh the uh the strike, they went back on strike because yeah. they didn't get everything that they wanted. Yeah. Yeah. So Exactly. Yeah, you know, I think that the tide is turning that these companies can't keep shortchanging people and making and working these people like dogs. And then it's exactly. respect, respect for people to work. So, you know, she gets what she deserves. Like, I don't know her personally, mm -hmm. but, you know, that's like the second team that she's lost in a row. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually, is it really? Oh, God. Yeah, that's bad. Like, look at the common denominator here. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> in, in, in order for a whole entire team, because that does not happen very often. No. You, you don't have you don't you maybe have one or two people that leap, but a whole entire team, something ain't right there. Like I, I'm exactly. gonna, I'm gonna keep up with this story, but you know, so control control two might be delayed. The Alan Wake games, the remaster is gonna be delayed. And they talking about movies. I don't know what's gonna happen with that. So they gave, like I said, moving on to the next one because it's connected. The Alan Wake and Control films and television rights acquired by the same company that people walked out on. Yep. In exchange, yep. Like, like I said, in exchange for financing half of Control Two, so they had to finance half of the game. Yeah, I remember that. I actually remember this. I remember that. I actually remember when they announced that they got financing for Control Two. 
That was a while ago, but yeah. Oh my god, yep. still. And a per, uh, Perna will finance 50% of control too, but now that this happened before this story, yeah, we're definitely in trouble with this game. Like it's gonna be yeah. it's gonna be delayed. Like at at best we'll probably get the Max Payne remasters because that's already done. Yeah. So we'll get that. And then, you know, after that we'll probably just be delayed. And that's gonna suck, man. Yeah, exactly. It it really is. It's gonna suck. It's not gonna be fun. But what it's can you but what can you do? Like I said, meanwhile us fans are just stuck. You know, with our hands out, just waiting for the finished product. Exactly. And where is it? And where is it, right? It's just it's all, not... all kinds of bullshit, man. And I, I'm going to keep exactly. up, definitely keep up with this story, man, because I want to see. Yeah, I got to know the dirt. I got to know. Now, yeah, we move on from we move on to more stupidity. Former Blizzard boss says that the $700 price tag for the PS5 Pro is more like getting a $350 upgrade because it aims for people who can trade their PS5s in at places like GameStop. Yep. And yep. I'm, I'm like, are these people like like poisoned over there? Like, I don't know what the heck is going on. It says former Blizzard president Mike... Uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. Y B A R R A. Ibarra? I'm Ibarra. not sure. Call him Mike. <laughs> yeah, Mike. It's like has some Mike. thoughts. Has some thoughts on the newly revealed PS5 Pro controversial $700 price tag. Which, by the way, I told y'all that it wasn't going to be that long. 900 Canada. Yeah, I told y'all that as soon as we read that story about Japan, that it wasn't going to be that long that we was going to get no. that $700 price tag. Yep. This guy says, hold on, my, my screen's kind of messed up here. What's going on over here? Give me one second, folks. Technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. This guy says... He says, no matter how you slice it, seven hundred dollars is a lot. Is a lot of money in the best of times. He's saying, I think it's a. I think of it a bit differently. Arguing that you can take your console, people who have the PS Five, they can take it to GameStop and trade it. So it's like getting a discount of three hundred fifty dollars off. And I'm like, as I said to Kelsey before, I said, uh, number one. He assumes that everybody has a PS5, which a lot of people don't. Yeah, exactly. Number, number two, if he thinks that GameStop is going to give anybody 350 bucks, he's crazy, man. That That's also, yeah, exactly. That's insane to think that. And the fact that, that he's, like I said, he's, like I said to you, he's twisting himself into, into a pretzel trying to defend this crap. And it doesn't... Mental gymnastics. Yeah, it's like, what the hell? I'm like, I don't care how you, how you, how you put it. $700 is a lot of money to spend on a damn console. A lot of people can't do it. They don't have... And then you have to buy the games. You got to buy the games. Then you got to buy the damn pass so that you can play online. Oh, yes, I forgot. And it's like, yo, like, how, how can you defend this? And he's like, oh, yeah. So let's say the people who do have that can trade their console and get a decent amount of money. What about the people who are just buying the PS5? They never had yeah. one. How do you explain that, dumbass? Well, I guess they see. Here's the thing. Like, people will trade them in. And then, yeah, people who've never had PS5s can get regular PS5s for cheaper. Thus expanding Sony's, you know, but here's the other thing. Here's the thing. This was the f initial first thing. How many of those PS5s that get traded in are just going to sit in a landfill? Like, that's the, that was my first thought was like, when they were talking about, yeah, just upgrade your old cons. I'm like, I'm like, okay, eventually not like, it's just insane to me. It's just insane to me because yeah, the waste that's going down because not like once everyone's upgraded to a PS5 Pro who wants it and everyone who wanted to get a PS5 second hand like once that's done like what are they going to do what are they going to do with all the inventory like it's going to get fucking chopped in a landfill somewhere it'll probably end up 
probably end up in China, Japan, where people would take the shell and make like these old retro consoles with the emulators in it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, right? Like, yeah, it's just, it's so stupid. It's so stupid and it's so out of touch. So out of touch. Yeah, and, and the thing is, like, the PS5 Pro is not, like I said before, they're not really giving you anything different than what the original PS5 has. What, a little bit extra memory? It's a little faster. I read the specs in, in an earlier episode. Just get, like uh, like Sean says in, in my chat, he's just going to get the, the PS5, not, not the PS5 Pro. Just get the original console, man. If you already have it, it's not worth the upgrade. That's yeah. like, you know, having the original PS5, it's like having the iPhone 14. And it's like, should I get the 15? No, because it's, it's the exact same phone, just with a higher yeah. number. Yep, exactly. And the fact that... Yeah, exactly. And the fact that you have people like this who think like that, that gives me a, a big insight to how these gaming companies think. They think we're stupid. Yeah. It's like, oh, we're, we're gonna fla yeah. we're gonna flash this shiny new toy in front of them, or a shiny gold thing, and they're just gonna buy whatever we put out here. And it's like you can you can put sprinkles on a turd, but it's still a turd. Exactly, exactly. And I think maybe a big thing too is like, uh, like we're we're PC people, and Ezio me and Ezio and chat can't get a gaming PC that does all the things a pro can do for the same price tag. Here's the thing, though. You can if you are into owning a PC as a hobby. A hobbyist does not buy a brand new PC all at once. A hobbyist waits for deals. They see what part they want to upgrade for, and then they wait for a deal. And then that's how I upgrade my entire rig for $600. But for an... But... For most people, uh, owning a desktop is like, it's just they don't need it for anything else, right? It's just, it, it, the thing that's absurd to me is, like, I, I don't know. It's just, it's just an absurd price. But that is the thing. Most people don't want to have to deal with a PC, right? Because, again, owning a PC is a hobby on its own. Right. So I, I see the appeal, but damn. I mean, I would rather at, at this point, I'd rather have a PC because at least you can upgrade it. I'd rather take that that money that I would spend on a PS5 Pro and just upgrade my PC. And know, oh, man, I would. And know that it's going to last. Get, I could get to next gen with with the pro. Uh, see here, a PS5 Pro is nine hundred dollars. I could upgrade my entire rig to next gen. Nine hundred for that amount. Nine hundred. Yeah, I could upgrade my entire rig. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. All right, but yeah, yeah, I totally. But like, I totally get that. It's just like it. I was I was talking about this actually yesterday. We're starting to get to the point um, where. Yeah, I feel I feel like consoles just can't keep up with uh, PC anymore, and that that usually happens. That usually happens, and then we get a new console, right? That usually happens, and then we get a new console, right? But it's uh, I think the problem is is it's hurting both consoles and PC, but PC is the source of it. Yeah, nine hundred dollars is insane. Exactly, I can upgrade my com entire computer to next gen for that, which is like insane. But yeah, it's just where yeah, it's so annoying because P c trying to compare the capabilities of PC and console is no like it. It's not a thing again. There is a point in the. the like the life cycle of a console's generation where it is match it's matched with PC and performance. And then it starts to get less and less and less. And the PS5 Pro, like the PS5 Pro won't even be able to match the need that like we we need a PS6 is what I'm saying. But we're also getting to the point where they are jacking up 
like they're just completely jacking up the price while not rebuilding anything. I'm just talking. We're just talking about how there is a point in a console's life cycle where it matches the average computer, right? Like they're kind. They kind of you know, like it peaks and then com- PC starts to outperform console. And I'm seeing that happen a lot now. But rather than just making a new, like a PS6. You know, instead of PS6, well, now you're getting the PS5 Pro, and then it still can't it still can't hit the same performance. They'd have to rebuild it and do it. But I mean, that there's the other part. Here's the other part. It's the same problem that laptops have. It's so expensive because s- smaller parts, smaller parts, and they m- need more complex cooling. Because you're like it's with the laptop, like with the laptop. You're paying way more just to get like the GPU to like a GPU that fits in a laptop. That's why they're so expensive, right? So I can't even imagine what a PlayStation console that could like the price of a PlayStation console that could match a next gen PC right now. Like that'd be crazy. Honestly, I, I don't think there's much much more that they can add to these consoles. Like PC, there's yeah. a reason why they say PC is king because PC, you know, minus Intel because they had their bullshit, but they'll always have yeah. ways that they can just make things more powerful. And these consoles are kind of struggling to keep up. And they are, you know, speaking of the PS6, well, I'll talk about that story on, on episode 14, but Intel lost out on $30 million dollars. A thirty million dollar deal that oh my a- God. that AMD swooped in and picked up right from under their feet. When it comes to uh, the processors and the chips for the PS Six, yeah, 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 so. AMD, AMD, they uh, they trip and they fall and then they keep going, you know. Yeah, and it, Nvidia just hops and skips and is like. Issues, nah. There's no issues. There's no obstacles. <laughs> That's a video. <laughs> like you, we're the only ones who have this technology, so you'll like it. Yeah. Meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile Intel keeps slipping and sliding down the damn hill because it doesn't seem like they oh, know man, what, yeah. what the hell they're doing now. But they're I, trying their best. I'll definitely talk about that more in detail on the next episode. But yeah, I mean, what else can you, what else can you possibly do? Because it's like that. The, the Xbox, they hit, they hit the wall. We'll talk more about that at the end of the show as far as, you know, how the, yeah. the, the gaming industry is really, uh, it's starting to die out. Oh, yeah. You know? Oh, yeah, it is. So stay tuned for that segment. Anyways, though, let's move on here because this is more of a funny ha-ha type of thing. A Catholic preach spent, uh, he spent 40 k $40,000 of church money on Candy Crush and slot machine apps. Oh, my Lord. Talk about addiction, folks. <laughs> right? Oh, man. Spending the all my, like, man, the almighty dollar. That's, yeah. uh, he, that's what he was. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, it says, uh, a Pennsylvania priest is facing criminal charges after police said he stole thousands of dollars of church funds and used them for app store transactions like virtual slot machines, Mario Kart, Candy Crush, and Pokemon Go. Jesus Christ. It says uh it says Lawrence Kozak, a former pastor of St. Thomas More Parish in Pottstown, spent over two hundred and fourteen thousand dollars on Ooh. his on his Apple ID. And I'm like for these games man man like he's going to hell and when he goes to hell satan is going to put him in front of a giant microtransaction filled game except he can't redeem and he can't pay for any of the microtransactions so he just has to sit and wait for the timers except the timers are like 600 years that's what that's what's going to happen that, that's what he's going to get for that. Like, he is. He is. Like, he's just going to have to sit there and yeah. wait for his resources. 
you know, that's that's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be as, as living hell. And then, and then God will come down. God will come down here and he'll be like, yeah, he'll be like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to. Uh, I'm going to need my money. You're going to have to pay that money right here. Yeah. Oh, my God. Right. No, no. God's going to come down and give him a gift card. It's going to be a hundred dollar gift card for the currency. And he's going to redeem it. And it's going to say card already redeemed. <laughs> hey, buddy, I, I, I can hear God myself. Be like, I'm here, my child. I'm gonna, need, I'm gonna need you to pay all of that money that you stole from my church, and I will make it so that all of your games are gonna make you wait in real time, and you will never be able to pay to get ahead in the game. Oh my God, man! But yeah, that's so bad. Like that's so bad. Yeah, uh, I those mean, games are so predatory, though. I like, mean, it's crazy. There's a reason why they call them gotcha games. Like, they will get your yeah. ass. They like, do. They do get your ass. Like, them them games like Temple Run and stuff and all of that, you know, what it requires you to spend real money to get costumes and all that stuff. And you got people that, yep. that easily get addicted. Now, virtual slots, it's not like you're winning money out of that. It's just a game. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It said that alleged he alleged over two thousand transactions and marked it as gaming from September two thousand nineteen to June two thousand twenty two. And I'm Good like, Lord. I'm like, damn, slot machine apps named in the complaint Cash Frenzy, Willy Wonka, uh, Vegas Casino slots, the Wizard of Oz slot machines. <laughs> Man, it's actually, like, it's actually fucking insane how unregulated gambling, like, regula gambling is heav heavily regulated, but it's the same thing as the tobacco company, right? They're going to tell you that what you're doing is bad for you, and they're going to give you, you know, like, here's a form if you want to, like, self ex I forget what the term is, self exclude or whatever. Like you can you can ban yourself. You can write down to ban yourself from casinos, you know. But it, like there are ways that can you know, you can actually stop going to a physical casino, you can stop going out. But then you have it on your phone and there's no regulation. So and that's what they're hoping for. I think it's what, the top one percent? The whales, right? They're called whales. I think it's the top one per. It's either the top one percent or the top ten percent. I think it's the top ten percent. Uh, but make like ninety percent pay like ninety percent of the income, and it's just that's what they're trying to do. Like all these tiny little microtransactions, like those are just like that's literally like coffee money to them compared to like these addicts, and they are so perfectly. To, like, they're they're so they're just so much, and they're not as regulated, and it's just yeah, they're so predatory. So like yeah, this dude is fucked, and he should have gotten help, which is crazy because he's a priest, right? Yeah, that's, but that's the deeper issue. As funny as this is, he stole money from his church. These are that's money that comes from people that that trust in this guy. Yeah. And it's like, you know, you know you're sick when you're when you're starting to do stuff, when you're starting to steal from people just to feed your habit, and it doesn't matter if it's alcohol, drugs, video gaming, doesn't matter if it's if it could be anything. Yeah. You know, and it's there's like, a joke on the Simpsons, Fabergé egg addiction. It could be anything, you know, but anyways, continue. <laughs> yeah, it's just that is sick. And I think that this guy should serve some time in jail. He talked about he he paid ten thousand dollars back to the debt. And I'm like, so what? I'm like, that's not. Yeah. It's funny to me how people think they could just make these problems go away. It's not going to go away. No, nope. no, nope. you can't erase the principle of the situation. And he won't be able to go back to being no pastor ever again, nor should he. And people should not attend churches with guys like that. You no, know? exactly. And I feel sorry for the people who paid their money to this guy. 
that, you know, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That's the thing that, you know, it's, it's one thing people are embezzling from a business, right? That they're providing, you know, like providing for a business, but it's a church. Like that, that money's coming from the collection plate. That mon money's coming from donors in the church. Like that is, that's all coming from the people who attend the church, right? You're stealing out of every single person's pocket and they gave that money out of the kindness of their heart, yeah. right? And that's like the fucked up part. Like it's one thing if it was a business, but you know, like, yeah, and I'm a nonprofit, like it's just, that's way different. And that's normally, way different. And normally, like back in the day, they used to use that money to help the homeless or to help people who everything, you know, in financial need. And it's like you got stuff like this. Yeah. Like, it's just yeah. sad. It's really sad. Yep, they still do that. They still host like he, around here. The churches will still host like lunches and everything. Like, yeah, churches are now less of a religious thing, more of like a social thing, and help people. Because you're right, yeah, like that that money does go into helping feed people. You know, getting clothing for people, toys. I know mine does toy donation drives every Christmas for kids. Like. And that's getting put into a phone. So there, I know it's like chicken and egg. Like, I know the root of the problem is the way these games prey on people. But at the same time, geez, dude. Yeah, have some self-control, man. Mm-hmm. It's like, I, help. I think the last time I bought in-game in currency for a game, like, you got to go back three years. Like, I don't want it that badly. Yeah. You know. I got to think, like years ago yeah probably like yeah. five at this point yeah it's just it's it's embarrassing like this next this next uh, item that we have here yeah now we already bagged on nintendo so now we got to bag on xbox again because of this yep. silly bullshit and of course you, yes for those of y'all who well real quick y'all y'all see that y'all see my collection back there see all them them statues and figures back there Look at that son Gohan right there, Broly, yeah. Undertaker. Yeah, I collect a lot of figures and stuff. Um, anyways, Xbox. For those of y'all who have the, uh, who have like the uh, the Game Pass, if y'all notice, like they started removing a lot of the AAA titles from the standard tier. So there's a yeah. lot, there's a lot of games that that you won't have access to without having to actually pay more money. But yeah tier, and welcome to and that's exactly how it's gonna be they're gonna give you these standard and low tiers that you're not gonna have access to certain games they're gonna start taking stuff away netflix did that yep and it's like i i saw this coming because as soon as that they all do that all these streaming services do that crap don't be surprised when they start putting ads in your xbox uh your standard tier pass or something like that they already do. Do they, they really? already do? The Xbox is already like when I had an Xbox, the amount of advertisements like for like well for Game Pass all the time, but like there'd always just be fucking ads for like other Xbox services and pro like I didn't like it. It's bullshit. So it's like so the they they redid all of their tiers and it's saying that the new yes. The new Xbox uh, standard tier replaced uh, the old one. I think I think this is European money though, but it says ten ninety nine, which is probably like twelve dollars for us. And <laughs> you know the uh, like some of the games that they removed from this, like this this a uh, list here. I'm not gonna read all of it. I'm gonna read the big ones that you guys might be interested in. Diablo four has been taken off of the list. So Diablo four that just came out. You can't play it on the standard tier. Um, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, who the hell cares? But if that if that's the type yeah. of game that you like, that's no that's no longer on the standard tier. If you play MLB the show 24, that game is taken off the standard tier pass. Man, I love the show. <laughs> you know, Payday 3, uh Senua, Senua Saga Hellblade 2, that's taken off. Starfield is also taken off the standard the standard tier 
So you're, you're losing. And also, um, further down the list, Valorant is also taken off of the standard tier Ooh, pass. People aren't going to like that. People aren't going to like that. So I the mean, Valorant one, people are going to be pissed. So they're, they're making it so that like they're cornering you, cornering you, making it so that you have to pay more money to play, you know, the higher tier games. And that's bullshit because it's like, why do that? And they know people are going to do it because what it, they want to play these games, right? Yeah. And this is how exactly. I, and this is how I see this going. How much do you want to bet? Like, like, what's today's date? Because I'm tired. Uh, September. Oh, uh, what's today? The 22nd? 22nd. Yes. Y'all remember this quote. September 22nd, 2024, when Mr. Kennedy sat here and said that all gaming consoles are going to go digital. All of them are gonna yep. go digital, and then yep. and then we're all gonna have to rely on these on these damn game passes and all of this bullshit, and they're gonna have us by the balls. Thanks, PC. If and, I want to own it, yeah. I'll find it online and own it. And and you're gonna have to pay. They're gonna have these these basic passes where you don't have you don't have access to like the like I said the WWE stuff and and the uh, you know the NFL and, and all of the big games that y'all like. Then you're gonna have the standard pass yeah. as you have here. Then they're gonna have the high yep. pass and then they're gonna have like the ultimate pass where you get access to every game out there. I guarantee it. Yeah, and that's just like that. That's so. <sighs> That's like so bad for people who are using it for like one or two games. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, and that's like, yeah, like Valorant, like so many people play that. Diablo, Diablo, so many people play that. You know, it's just like, yeah, so many people are not going to be pleased. Like, it's one thing to add another tier. That's fine. Because like, that's a fuck ton of games you actually get. Right, but removing items from a tier, like, and I do believe some games are usually timed. Like, I, I think some games, they do take them off after X amount of time so they can put in new games, right? Which is fine. I know, just because I know there's some games they never take out. But to take a game that people had access to and paid for, and when they... When they got like when they got Game Pass, they agreed with you that they were gonna pay for this game. And if you never said you were taking it off, but then you just move it to an upper tier, that's fucked. It like is. It, you know, it's one thing to remove a game after X amount of time. Like that's fine, right? Like that's perfectly fine. You're gonna get new games in its place. But to take a game and then just go, yeah, now you have to pay more for it. That's fucked. Yeah, that's that's bullshit because it's like like uh like uh I'll just call uh Revy. I'll just call you that. You know who know who I'm talking about, yeah. Revy. Uh Rev, yeah. They uh you know, when you when you, you're playing a game like Valorant, which a lot of people play, imagine going to log on to your Xbox console and you no longer have access to that game. These people are gonna be pissed off. Oh yeah. And there's gonna be a lot of backlash because it's like and and if you are that one person, like say, say they took uh, to see Dead by Daylight. We'll just use that as an example. They take, imagine they take Dead by Daylight off the standard the standard thing and make it on the uh, like the ultimate pass. If that's the only game that you play, that's the only game you play. That's gonna piss you off, man. Like I don't know, yep. I don't know what Xbox, what Microsoft is doing over there. Like they they're just doing all kinds of ass backwards shit. Dragging ass is what they're doing. You know, the they, fucking up at every step. They are. They're pushing the game pass with the Amazon Fire Stick, where they just give you an Xbox controller and the Fire Stick itself. Like that's yeah. gonna, like that's gonna do anything. Now they're doing this. Yeah. I'm, I'm like what's It's gonna the, just become a streaming thing. Like, it's just gonna become a streaming box. That's what I think. I think all of these consoles are going to be streaming only. They're going to be cloud-based mm -hmm. systems and all of that crap. So you're exactly, buying, yeah. so, so you're buying games you don't even own. Nope. And they could easily just nope. remove it anytime that they see fit. Because anytime that those cloud servers go down, you can't play your games. 
You're screwed. Microsoft actually already, already did this. Microsoft already did this to us before. Games for Windows Live. Uh, they got rid of that when they got rid of that was their launcher. Game for Games for Windows Live, and then they got rid of it, and there were a ton of games that got broken because they needed to connect to the Games for Windows Live launcher. Can remember that? I can remember that. I I'm, I'm sure they did a fix. I have no clue, but I can remember as soon as they got rid of that. Like, it fucked up a lot of games. Yeah, and it's just that they're, they're punishing us for no reason. They're forcing people to pay more money for no reason at all. And it's just like, come on. Like, like I would, I don't even work for a video game company, but I can do better than this. Like, I would yeah, have, right? a, like, if you pay for the ultimate pass, you get all the backwards compatibility. Like, you get all the, all the old Xbox games. That you know, from the, yeah. ori the original Xbox, the 360, the Xbox One, give them bang for their buck. Don't take games away, cause this reminds me of uh, like the the games that you can only play online, like online only yeah. games, because when that server mm -hmm. fails, that game is is no good. Exactly that. Exactly, 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 and that's what I that's even what I talk about, and that's. It's the with these fucking launchers. Like when the even when the launchers go, like what's gonna happen? Like what's gonna happen when these games require launchers to actually like authenticate them and play them? And you right, can, like when those launchers go, because that already happened and, and it breaks games. And you and can't it's just, you can't do that on console anyways. <laughs> so it's like no. you know, it's just exactly. I, I, I don't know what's going on here, but it's they, they're really they're really fucking up. All these companies are fucking up in their own ways, man. And it's just exactly it's infuriating as a, as a gamer because it's like, what do we do now? Like, what do we do exactly? You know, people are gonna want to play Valorant. They're gonna want to play these games. Oh yeah, and stuff. Even though I'm not a fan of that stuff, but you know, you got a lot of people who are who like playing exactly. stuff. Exactly. And it's like they don't want to have to pay extra money to pay that. I would just get a piece, exactly. get, no. a, get a PC, go on Steam or go on CD keys and just buy it from there, and that's oh, it. Oh yeah, that's the other. See, that's the other thing that's nice about PC is if I miss a sale, like say I miss like a rock bottom price sale, do 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 do. Some someone bought like five hundred of those keys. While they were on sale, so I didn't, I, I didn't miss the sale, like, yeah. the, like the lowest price that it, like, that's what I love is if there is a rock bottom price sale and you missed it, it doesn't matter because now on key sites it's always going to be that rock bottom sale price, yep. and that's how I've gotten like five or six like AAA games for literally like thirty bucks. Yeah, just I, because of that. I bought all of my games with the exception of Evil Within. Um, I bought all my games from CD Keys, like with the Tomb Raider stuff that I'm playing. I bought five. Uh, I bought uh, Tomb Raider 2013, Shadow Tomb Raider, Rise of Tomb Raider, uh, Tomb Raider Legends, and uh, Anniversary, all for like under fifteen dollars. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, yeah, exactly. You know, you exactly. can't you can't do that with console folks. And nope. You, you know, but it's just I don't know what they what they hope to accomplish with this. This is gonna fail. And they better be prepared mm -hmm. for that shit storm that's gonna come after them when when the right. fan, when the fans really start to notice this stuff. Oh, Microsoft is in trouble, man. They in trouble. Oh yeah. Oh, be they are. Because this reminds me of that of the first time I, I'll do this point and I'll move on. But the uh when they were getting ready to come out with the Xbox One, remember all of the bullshit that they wanted to include with it ads and they wanted it to be online only and they wanted it to be to where once you register with it, nobody else can play your console. Yeah. And if, yep. you, if you go Can't to share, if you go to a friend's house and, and you want to play the game with them, like you can only log into your account for like an hour or two hours and then it cuts off. Yep. Bullshit, yep. Bullshit yep. Can't like share. that. They yeah. wanted they wanted to implement that and then when they saw when they saw all the people that was like they went over to the PS4 ship, then they're like, okay, we'll change all this, we'll change all this. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. 
Yeah, that right there told me where Microsoft's head was because they were trying to do a variety box instead of a gaming console. And that, you know, when the Xbox One was about to come out, I'm like, yo, there's no way they could possibly be serious about this. A console that's online only. A console where, like I said, you can only sign into your account at somebody else's Xbox for two hours. And then it cuts you out. You can't do family share. These are the things that they wanted to put on us. They wanted to wanted it to be more of a streaming box. And I'm just, I, I don't understand. Maybe they're just doing this stuff for, for attention. I don't know. Because every decision Microsoft has made when it came to the Xbox has just been hit. I mean, I'm sorry, miss. I'm sorry, it's been miss. Their console sales have tanked. They're, they're selling this, this uh, the Game Pass with the Amazon Fire Stick, which is not going to go anywhere because a lot of people aren't going to buy that shit. You know, and it's just like they're, they're playing the Google Stadia playbook. Remember the Google Stadia? When they came out, they were all ambitious about that, the Google streaming gaming service. And that shit was, it went over like a fart in the wind. Nobody even remembers it. So it's like, man, damn. And the people who suffer is us. Because, you know, we we want the products. We want to play these games, man. And it's like when y'all screw people like that, this is why I, I can't buy Microsoft stuff no more. I don't buy, so I don't support Sony. I don't support Nintendo either because they're all a bunch of greedy bastards who just screw over the fans. And it's like, yo, know, I, I don't know what it what it is with these guys. I think they got an Oedipus complex where they think that we need them. They need us because it's our money that pays for all of their systems and all of their games and stuff. And when you bite the hand that feeds you, don't be surprised when you end up being bankrupt or Nintendo. Don't be surprised when Nintendo goes the way of Sega. Sega just making games for other consoles because they they screwed the pooch. And it's just like, I'm tired of this shit, man. And it's like, as a gamer, it's kind of like, you know, I'm becoming more and more or less interested in gaming because I'm like, why? I'm not going to spend 70, 70 bucks for a damn game. Rant anyway, is, rant is over, folks. But that that's all I got to mm -hmm. say. That's all I got to say about these tight fisted bastards, man. Mm hmm. Anyways, <sighs> let's let's move mm -hmm. along here. Now, this one is kind of, this one is kind of crazy. I had to. I had to read this one. Um, this one, it, it <laughs> says Italian authorities bust a $52 million video game trafficking ring. Criminals smuggled pirated games and bootleg consoles from China. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Holy shit. It's crime time. It it's is video game crime time. Yeah, it is crime time, folks. It would not be a hot takes episode without that. It says that the uh, the Italy Financial Police reported dismantling a sizable video game and console trafficking operation in Italy based primarily on bootleg consoles with pirated video games from China. Jesus Christ. It says huh. that, it says that rough, yeah. roughly $52.5 million when converted over to, to USD. That's our money, U.S. money. Yeah, it's a it's, lot of cash. It says that they seized over 12,000 consoles with pirated games. Holy crap. Wow. And it, and it says that it said the pirated games were primarily prop, uh, popular franchises like, you know, from Nintendo, from Sega, from Atari. Atari. <laughs> Get Re wrecked, really? Nintendo. <laughs> really? Atari? But Super Mario Brothers, Street Fighter, Star Wars. <laughs> Damn. Atari, though? Like, is really people really clamoring yeah. to buy Atari games these days? Apparently. Uh, it says that they were imported. And I, I know about that because I know in China they make, like, those those retro consoles that I was just talking about where they just take consoles that look like your consoles. You know, the console yes. that you know, and then they just it ends up just being, like, some old hacked Nintendo games or Super Nintendo yeah, games. Yeah, it's just an emulator inside. It's just an emulator inside, yeah. They're kind of cool. 
They're kind of cool, like, if you just want some cheap, like, if you want a cheap emulator, but you want the physical, uh, like, the actual physical experience, I've, I've wanted to look for things like that, but, yeah, that's pretty much what it is, isn't it? That's what it's gonna be. It's just some, some bootleg emulator on it. Yeah, they're saying that- With a shell painted. It's saying that these guys are facing up to eight years in prison with pending case, case results. So it doesn't really look too good for them because, you know, no. I, I know what they do with this stuff because you're going to have people who have never played video games before and they're not going to know any better. So when you go on eBay and, and you go on Amazon and you're like, oh, they can put, oh, here's a Nintendo Switch for, for you know, dirt yep. cheap. And they're going to pick it up and they'll be like the, the you know, be like the, the Nintendo, you know, the Nintendo stick or something like that. <laughs> the Nintendo stick, yeah, like the classic grandma gift, yeah. you know, like I call that the classic grandma gift where like she's like, oh, I know you like video games and she gives you a video game and it's like the lamest, weirdest thing ever. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you're like, thanks, grandma. And it's, it's always them, them bullshit boxes that have like all these video game characters and none of them are in any mm -hmm. of these games. Yeah. Yeah, or back in the day, like, those, like, 500 in one carts, those oh were, like, God. gold to parents, right? Because they didn't know the difference, and all they would think is, really, like, 500, you know, like, oh, wow, 500 games, and then you get them, and they're, like, the shittiest games. Yeah, remember. They've ever existed. Remember Action 52, everybody? For the Nintendo? Yeah, like, maybe three of those games actually worked. Yeah, and they were and it was to sell, and wasn't it made to sell those fucking the cheetah game? Yeah, like, didn't is. that's what it was? It was made to, yeah, those, and they wanted it to be like the next like Ninja Turtles, Street Fighter shit. Yeah, I the, remember that. Yeah, the, the, I forgot what it's called, but it's like like three cheetahs that fight and stuff. Yeah, shout out to the angry video game nerd, but um, yeah, yeah, that's where I saw it first too, and then I got. An action 52 on an emulator and yeah like nothing worked <laughs> it's just, it was true you know, you know what's funny though because it kind of reminds me of uh when when your your parents or your grandparents would go out and, and buy you those those tiger electronic handhelds yes yes You're like i want mega man yes i want mega man too and then they come home with their freaking tiger electronics which every kid had because what else was you gonna do <laughs> right it's just like it is yeah like, exactly like it looked like calculated graphics and stuff like oh god like that that brought up memories man i had a batman one yeah that one sucked it's just street fighter i'm like oh my god like y'all remember that stuff yep but, yep i remember i i absolutely remember yes yeah, uh, but definitely crazy. uh they are uh you know, they're facing eight years in prison as they should, and they confiscated all of those consoles, and they'll probably end up back in China again, and somebody else will pick them up and try to sell them. Because remember, uh, remember the Soldier Boy bullshit? When he, I remember that, yes. When the, the dude was buying up all of these these uh, these bootleg consoles and, and trying to claim them as consoles that he made. I remember. And then he ended up. He ended, I remember. He ended up getting in a lot of trouble, and he had to pull all of that. That's what you get. Yep. Yeah, man, the bootleg games. I remember those though. I remember those, and I I also remember having an EverDrive. I also remember having an EverDrive. And one thing that I always thought was funny was that secondhand. I remember also. I also had a, uh, a, uh, what do you call it? Like, what do you guys call it when you, like, jailbreak a, um, a Nintendo thing? Like a homebrew. Like a homebrew store. Uh, and, yeah, I, uh, I just, like, I remember how I had this DS. It had, like, a hack thing on it. And I can remember bringing it into, like, I wanted to, I, I have a, I have two DSs, right? And brought it into, like, the pawn shop to do whatever, and they were pissed. 
they were pissed because they had to like reset it and do everything and I was like are you fucking kidding me like or I can remember but I also remember having an EverDrive and an EverDrive was absolutely legit like EverDrive was absolutely legit that was uh I'll just bring that back for a second uh, man I miss that I, I like emulation. It's just like if I have a choice, yeah, my, I would prefer to have like a console as well. I like like emulation's all right. What uh, what do we have next? Well, you was in the More middle. Prime time. You was in the middle of something. Oh, I was just ranting about emulators, but I'm ready for more crime time. Hey. Yo, we should call it that, too. <laughs> yep, it's crime time. Yeah, there's more crime stories here. Delaware man accused of trying to steal a video game, well, video game consoles from three stores within hours. This one is uh, crazy. Luckily, nobody got hurt, but this one is crazy. It says a Delaware man was arrested after authorities. He tried to uh, he tried to steal a video game console from three different store locations. Oh, my God. And was twice fought off by employees. <laughs> so, <laughs> a Best Buy. It, it said, oh my god, dude. So he got beat up by like two like two employees, man. It mm -hmm. says Christopher Trexler, 27, atta uh, attacked a Best Buy cashier Holy crap. as she was trying to ring up a video game console mm -hmm. and an Apple device at the store. What the fuck? It said Trexler... Uh, Trexler allegedly pinned the cashier against the shelf and grabbed the merchandise and tried to flee from the store while being chased by other Best Buy, other Best Buy employees. Holy shit. It says wow. uh, Trexler escaped the store after a brief scuffle with employees during which he said he was armed with a knife. Holy crap. And that's just the first part. It says uh, it says an hour later, it was believed that Trexler went to a GameStop and asked about a, about video game consoles before handing the cash, handing the cashier a threatening note. <laughs> oh, my God. Imagine being a GameStop employee they and it's like you're getting the bank heist treatment. I mean, if I was a GameStop employee, I would just tell him, yo, just take it. It ain't even worth it. I don't get yeah, paid, oh, yeah, paid exactly. I don't exactly. Get paid that much. It says that he went behind the sales counter and grabbed a pair of scissors, but was stopped by an employee and who was able to toss the scissors away during the scuffle. So, so this idiot went behind the the counter, grabbed a pair of scissors. I'm like, I like video games, but fuck? not that much. Holy crap! There's there's drugs involved here. I like to think so. There, a, there's drugs involved here. It said that the uh, that the cashier sustained minor injuries, but refused medical treatment. But that employee chased Trexler off from the store. So bravo to you, you know, for standing your yeah. ground, getting rid of that guy. And it's just it's crazy. It's crazy that this guy. So he attacked a woman cashier, pinned her against the wall, and then ran off with the. Uh, with the merchandise. Then he went to a GameStop and then gave out a threatening note and grabbed a pair of scissors to try to stab the guy. They got into a scuffle. And then I'm like, yo, like, either he's selling this stuff to get money for drugs or I, I don't know. Holy shit. Says he was Yeah, just, that's gotta be drugs. That's gotta be drugs. I said that this guy, uh, then he went he went to another business and tried to steal it doesn't give the name of the third one but he went to another business and tried to steal another gaming console before he was finally taken into custody by the police good lord that dude was on a fucking my lord yeah that sounds like drugs yeah, so that sounds like drugs it says that this guy had several warrants in september alone just for thefts that happened days earlier. Several warrants. Which means this drugs. guy was little. Yes, yeah, it's, it's got to be drugs. Yeah, it's dr that's drugs. That's drugs. 
that stealing that many times and then being this erratic, like that's meth. That's meth. And that's just he, he's got to be getting this stuff so that he can sell it to get money for that. You know, right. Cause, yeah. Because it's like I, I can't see nobody, you know, stealing an Xbox, a Xbox Series X just to play it. Right. <laughs> Not these days. Man. Right. So the, oh, man. Oh, man. Like, of course. Yeah. he. Had, I, I actually looked up a photo of this dude. You see? Yeah. You okay. See. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, this is one of those stories where I know I already know it's just like some white trash meth head. And I was correct. This screams white trash meth head antics because like that dude went like holy shit. Yeah, the dude looked rough, but like holy yeah. fuck. The neck tattoo you know? and the neck tattoo gave it away from me. I'm like, this dude is on drugs. Oh man. yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. Said, it said he was Man. he was charged with two counts of first degree attempted robbery, shoplifting, and uh, criminal mischief. Good God! All of that. It doesn't say. Oh. It doesn't say why he stole it, but it's like you know, you you can put two and two together. Either he, like I said, it's got to be a drug habit. It's got to be. Yeah, it's drugs. Nothing. Nothing else would make you. One want to get like expensive, th like you know what I mean. Consoles can be flipped like that, you know mm -hmm. what I mean. Like, p and you're repeatedly hitting up places for theft. Yeah, that's drugs. Yeah. That's meth or something. Yeah. Meth or crack. And it sure so doesn't help that they got you on camera and all of these stores. Right. So it's like you know, people too. Like, geez. The good thing is that nobody got hurt. I mean, other than minor injuries, nobody got killed. Yeah. Which is good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I just hope that uh, that the the cashier, the lady cashier, that she's okay, because that's got to be a uh, a messed up experience yeah, for her. Oh yeah, that's got to be traumatizing, right? Like having to go back to work after that kind of stuff. Yeah, I hope she's uh, hope she's adjusting well to it, because yeah, that's. No, I, I would quit that's after rough. that. If I was a lady, I'd just oh, be like, man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a remote job and work from home from now on. Oh, and you know that they probably only compensate her, her with like, you know, like here's thirty percent off everything in one shopping spree or something. And they probably, you know, for you not suing us. They probably gave her a free month of, of the Xbox Game Pass. Oh my God! <laughs> this... Plus the plus the Fire Stick. If uh, you get the the Amazon, I mean, you get the Amazon bundle, but you don't get access to Diablo Four, because that's exactly the, that's, that's the higher tier. Jesus Christ, people with these people Ooh. like there's no shortage of of articles that we can find because people are just getting dumber and dumber as right. they, as days go on, and it's just like man, like how do you defend this as a gamer? Exactly, you can't. Yeah, whether you can't. Whether it's an addiction, maybe he's addicted to video games, or maybe, like I said, it's drugs. It's, it it boils down to addiction. It's be drugs. Yeah, yeah, but and but that's the thing. Anytime video games and crime are even like within four miles of each other, you know the journalists are on it. You know, you know, you know, the protective groups are all over that, you know, the family groups, like every single time, because, you know, someone's going to try and spin this as like video games, you know, turn you into a crackhead. Yeah. You know, I like mean, they're, they're just looking for that stuff. Oh, video games causes violence. Oh, video game causes you to become a criminal. I'm like, no, being being fucked up in the head causes you to be a criminal. Yeah. For yeah, the exactly. For the most part, I'm like people. These parents don't want to admit that their kids are crazy. I hate. Yeah, I hate to use nope. that word, but that's what it is. If your yeah. kid, if your kid is crazy enough to emulate something they see in a video game, they ain't all there. No, they're not. No, they're not. And I people always forget, like you know, these incidents that we talk about, where it, you know, there's these incidents we talk about, and like these kids, it's like there was. This didn't happen out of nowhere. These kids probably had issues for years that their parents just completely ignored, right? It, it wasn't their problem, right? Oh, their kid's just, you know, he's just 
different. He's just, he has troubles, you know? And they ignore that for so long, and then suddenly your kid's stabbing another kid over what they said to them in Roblox. Like, yeah, just, or still in somebody's car, or shooting somebody. And I'm just like, man, like, your kid wasn't right. I played a lot of games in my day. I played Mortal Kombat. You didn't see me going out in the street and ripping people's heart out their chest. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, right? Like, we... Yeah, it's a medium in which people, you know, unfortunately, like what, I don't know, we're not banning Jeeps because people realize like, wow, a lot of murderers drive Jeeps. I don't actually know what they primarily drive, but I, you know what I mean? Like someone looks at through all these news articles and it's like, wow, I'm seeing that a lot of murderers drive Jeeps. I wonder if driving a Jeep makes you a murderer. No, it makes you cool as hell when you take all the doors and windows you know, off. <laughs> like, uh, it's it's a deeper root here. I think that, you know, and, and I'm going to keep this short and sweet, but it's like it, it all boils down to mental mental illness not being treated the way that it should be. Because you have a lot of people yeah. here, especially in this country, who are trying to protect everybody's feelings. Oh, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. So you can't even you can't even say that a person is is mentally unstable. They want to try to switch the words up and stuff and all of this this yep. bull, bullshit that buries the problem. Nobody's doing anything about this stuff. You know what they nope. do? You know what they do on the news when a kid shoots up a school? They go into the back the backstory. Well, he was always bullied as a kid, or he was always a yeah. cry kid. Oh, you yeah. know, and, and I'm so I, kind. I'm like, and, I, and I'm sitting there, I'm like, I don't give, I don't give a flying crap what happened in the kid's life. That does not give you the right to go to a school and to take out innocent people. Yeah, exactly. And th this is the, exactly. This is the mindset of people these days. Oh, we don't want to, we don't want to deal with the issue. So we'll bury it under, under bullshit language. So maybe yeah, it'll, it'll that's, change it. That's, that's one thing that always pisses me off. That's one thing that always pissed me off, you know, is if you want a diagnosis, you better want it so that you can get better. People now just want diagnosis so they can be like, oh, I can't do this because I have, you know, like this disorder, you know, and to me, it's like, okay, I have an issue with like my obsessive compulsive disorder, right? But... Yeah, and that makes things difficult. So, but I went and I got a diagnosis. So now I know what I have. So I can work through the fucking thing, right? And now it's like it doesn't bother me. It doesn't affect my life. And that's the thing that I hate is, yeah, people use these excuses now, but there's no incentive to get better, right? And I'm sorry, but once we stopped, like, once we stopped, uh, with all the mental hospitals and involuntary commitment and stuff like that was it. Yeah. Right. And it's like people, like I said, people here are so, so worried about hurting people's feelings instead of doing what's right. And this, this is why stuff keeps going the way that it is, you know, and mm -hmm. you know, stuff like this, this guy will, will probably go to jail for a little bit. Then he'll be back out on the streets. Nobody's going to evaluate yeah. this guy to see if he's got a drug nope. problem, if he's got mental issues. Nope. He's and, just a number. He's and, just a number in the system. And you know when they'll probably do something about it when he kills somebody. Then, yep. they'll, then they'll do something oh, about it. But let's not stop the issue while it's here in our face. You know, it's just yeah. it's ridiculous, man. And I, you know, I, I, I feel sorry for the people that had to go through that. Anyways, yeah. Though, let's move on to uh, as, let's continue. Yes. As bad as that situation was, this one is even worse. Yeah, this one's fucked. Gainesville man, then that's down here in Florida. Gainesville man sentenced in a case involving teen, a teen sex victim. Ooh. A software engineer who helped, who helped develop the early stage early stage video game technology used for popular games like Fortnite and Gears of War is spending the rest of his life in federal prison for holding a 16 year old runaway girl as a sex slave in Florida for over six weeks. Good God! 
It says, Good God, what the fuck? It says that the U.S. District Judge Allen uh, Windsor sentenced Timothy Frederick Murphy Johnson. And that tells me everything that I need to know. A man that was yeah. that was 40 years old in, in Gainesville, he sentenced him to 90 years in prison. Good. So he's going to die that's, in there. That's pretty good. Oh, that's pretty good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it won't be from old age. When, once the other prisoners hear what he's done. Yeah, he's going to be. You hurt women and children. You're not going to have a good time. And those kind of crimes. Oh, yeah. He's not. So as soon as the, the word gets round, he's done. He's cooked. It said he's that, cooked. So that Murphy Johnson pl pled guilty to enticing a teen in Corpus Christi, Texas, to run away from her family last summer and join him in Florida. Where he told her he would build that they would build a new life together. That's so fucked, man. It said man, that, that's so fucking awful. It said that he he took he took the girl to his trailer home located on a dirt road on rural countryside ten miles northeast from the University of Florida campus, which I know exactly where that is. Oh God. And it's just oh. The details are nasty. Yeah, it's just. Sickening. I'm not even getting into the yeah, details. Like, I, there's a lot in that article. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's about as far that's as that's fucking wild. That's about as far as I'm yeah. gonna go on that. That's disgusting. That is, yeah, that is fucking crazy. That's fucking crazy, and that is about to be like a fucking uh, PR disaster for these. Like for these companies, oh man! Like because he how he you know like a lot of technology like yeah in Fortnite and stuff, right? Oh man! This guy like so uh, bad. I'll go about like I, I won't go too deep into it, but it said when they found the team that she was she was stripped she had been stripped and she was tied to a bed for days, <clears throat> cut, oh. cut with a knife and sexually assaulted. By him and his girlfriend, not just him. And his girlfriend. Oh, God. Carla Homolka and fucking Paul Bernardo shit. That's fucking wild. Jesus Christ. That's fucking wild. So him, and can you imagine, though? Holy fuck. So him and, like, and just, his girlfriend tortured this girl. And they said, That's fucking insane. They said they found sex toys, handcuffs, condoms, and plan B. Ugh. Uh, no more. No, no more. more. Let's not continue. Yeah. Yeah, no more. We're not continuing this. We're not continuing the article. But, like, can you fucking imagine, though? Like, you go to work with these people. Like, think about the people who, like, worked with this dude, and he's just, like, this random tech person. Like, that's the craziest thing. Jesus that's Christ. That's, like, crazy. But yeah. The, but the good people news is... People are absolutely is, fucked. The good news is, which, I, I mean, it's good news, but then, you know... It's also kind of you know unfair because you have both people who are doing the exact same thing. Him and his girl, he gets ninety, and she gets twenty three years. How, yeah, yeah, how, she probably did a plea deal on him. She probably snitched. Yeah, I she mean, probably snitched on him. Where's the equality in that? Yeah, well, I don't know how much she put on there, but yeah, usually she, she either probably snitched. Or I actually don't know the whole situation. I don't know if I want to know, but god damn. But, like, holy fuck, like, watch who you're talking to, people. Yeah. Like, watch who you're talking to. And if someone, if someone in any way, shape, or form tries to make you believe that their presence in your life is going to make your life significantly better, get the fuck away from that person, because they're going to make your life significantly worse. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's, it's uh, but holy crap, like man. that's that's absolutely crazy, and yeah, it's just it's just absolutely like the way people use the internet and the way people use technology and stuff, just to like, oh, it's crazy. I honestly like it's controversial, but I would almost, you know, I wish the internet required using license, you know. In some ways, I almost wish that using the internet required, like, registration and stuff. Like, you know, like, driving a car. 
you know, just, like some sort of license to use the internet because there's so much fucking shit like this. It's just one of those things where it's, you know, again, why aren't like using my father as an example? My father was always involved in everything that we did. He he always asked what was going on. Is are there any problems? Is there anything you need to talk to me about? Parents don't check on their kids like they used to anymore. Even me, as almost, no. almost 40 years old, my father calls me to check on me. Hey, you all right? So is mother fearless, yep. Mm-hmm. And it, it, just feel, yeah. it just feels like a lot of these parents, they're not involved in their, their kids' lives the way that they should. Because if they were, they would catch if there was something going on with their daughter. If she needed help, if she needed to talk about something, she wouldn't have ran away. Most, exactly. Most kids. Exactly. Like there, there's a lot going on yeah, at home. Clearly, right? Most kids that run away, they feel they feel alone. That's why they they do that. Yeah. They feel like people, yeah. people don't care about them. Like their parents is not around enough. You know, and it's like talk to your children. This could have been prevented. I don't know what what her situation is. I don't know what it is, but for a 16 year old to run from Corpus Christi. Texas to Gainesville, Florida to be yeah. with, to be with some strange some strange monster and his and his monster girlfriend. There's something going on there. Yeah, and they torture They're, her. Yeah, and she'll never be right after this. No, she won't. No, it doesn't matter how many. Yeah, exactly. Ooh. I'm just glad yeah. they, they rescued her. They found her and they returned her home to her family so hopefully yeah. so hopefully her family is is gonna you know help this girl out hopefully hopefully they're not the fucking problem jesus christ you know this right you, you read stories like that and it's like man i'm glad i didn't eat before stream right Ugh. anyways though we got that's um, what i'm saying so that's the end of my notes but we're gonna get into a uh a deeper conversation with the uh the video game companies and the video game world and and how you know we fear how things is just the way that things are going um do you want yep. do you want to start off first yep um you know at times i'm kind of like laggy too but it's okay um yeah i think we're at the end here i think we are at we are about to see another video game crash it's happening it's happening the video game industry enjoyed like almost 20 years of smooth cash flow and then i think once code hit and everyone was playing games and everyone was inside they were seeing these record numbers and like icarus i think they flew a little too far like a little too close to the sun, right? And once the numbers started going down, well, in capitalism, that's the worst thing you could ever have is the numbers going down, right? So now we're seeing, first we saw nonstop cash grabs, remakes, 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 you know? And only some of them were bumping, and then that was fine last year. Full of flops. There were so at the very start. Well, we got some good games last year, but this year full of flops. Most of the yeah, most of them like. Actually, we did get some good games last year, but this year has been full of flops. I haven't seen like this year is actually insanely full of flops. And then on top of that, we have all the consoles are just a shit show, and it's so many companies trying to keep up while not hitting the revenue that they're getting anymore. And you can see it, and you can see it in the stocks, and you can see it in just all these different ways that they're trying to monetize things, right? Yeah. But, yeah, I and, think it's the end soon. And it's a, I mean, it's a combination of things. Inflation hasn't made anything better. But I just think that the video game world, along with Hollywood, they're, they're creatively bankrupt. They're out of ideas. Yep. What could they possibly do? They absolutely are, yeah. Now that hasn't been done before. Like they I feel like they rested on their laurels with the, with the DLC bullshit. They rested on that. They rested on these remakes and now 
you know, people are getting tired of remakes. So what are y'all going to do? The video game sales because exactly of, because of the prices, like like I just mentioned, and because, you know, bullshit tactics like this, people aren't buying your stuff. So, I mean, I think the last time when we was talking about Sony, I think it dropped the Sony hardware. These guys plan on doing. Yeah, I'm having some uh, technical difficulties over here myself. What the hell? Twitch? Yeah, we'll just we'll just finish this rant. Yeah, well, it's OK. It's my side. Yeah, my bit I'm rate, lagging. My bit rate just dropped. But anyways, though, um, yeah, Twitch is being weird. Mine, too anyway yeah so it's like i don't think that there's, there's anything more that these video game companies can do because uh, like i said be creatively bankrupt they can't keep doing the dlc bullshit because that doesn't work they can't keep doing remakes so what what technology nope. with technology being the way that it is as advanced as it is there's really nothing else that they can do so what no there's nothing you know, and it's like it's scary when you're a console game and you have a lot of people who don't want to realize that how bad things are getting. But you know, I mean, it's really bad. Exactly. It's really bad. Nobody's buying consoles. People can't afford to get, you know, they can't really afford to buy PCs <laughs> and stuff. And it's just exactly. Sorry, minor thing weird too. It's all good. So, yeah, I really don't yep. know. I really don't know where we go from here. Yeah, I have no clue. And I have no clue. Where we've hit the peak of so many. And it's like even if they came you know? out, even if they come, you that's know, what I'm saying. Like nothing. Big idea because what what do we have? That the Lona these franchises that a lot of people have nostalgia for, and then they screw it up. Yep. Oh yeah, remakes have been sucking, and then there's like. I would think even the next big thing, like, the next big thing, like, there was VR, but VR is fucking expensive, and there's, like, not a lot of games that support VR, and then the fact is, like, with me, I'd love to try VR, but I don't want, I don't know if I'm going to get motion sick, like, yeah, we, we've kind of gotten to the point, and it, they can't razzle-dazzle us anymore with good graphics and stuff, right? Yeah, because it, it all comes down to the, like you're playing the same thing like when Nintendo. I played Pokemon back in '97. Every single Pokemon game from that point is basically just it's the same game with better graphics and just more Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. Mi Microsoft with the bullshit Call of Duty games. It's the same damn game over and over again. Yep. You know, it's like you're not fooling anybody. And it's like, after a while, did they honestly think that this was going to keep people enticed and keep people wanting to play their stuff? They're just giving us the same no. stuff. And, and Capcom reselling the same game on every console that comes out. Yeah. I yep. I love Resident Evil 4, but how many damn times are you going to keep putting it out on, on new consoles? I played it on the exactly. game. Exactly. I played it on the GameCube. I played it on the PS2 when they ported it over. I played it on the PS3 when they ported it. I played it on yep. on PS4. Now they got the remakes that they pushed out on all yep. the consoles. Now they got them on mobile. And when the PS6 comes out and the next Xbox, they'll port port the games to that. It's like do exactly. something. Do something else. They're out of ideas. They're out of ideas. And, and it's like, it's, this is ridiculous. Like, and it's like when, when we do get unique games from the indie, the indie developers, they attack them and try to get them to get it taken away, taken down. Exactly. Exactly. No one can win. No one can win. And then they wonder why. And then they wonder why they can't sell nothing. Why nothing is moving. What the hell did y'all expect? Y'all right? shot themselves in the foot. Y'all taking away all avenues for a gamer to be able to get to get your product or to get a product like your product. So what do you expect? You know, exactly. It's just I, I mean, and I, I don't feel sorry for it. You know who I feel sorry for the fans? Some of them, because some of them are just just fucking idiots. But yeah, you know, um for the, the game developers who spend time and time and hours developing this stuff 
And, you know, they're just doing what the company's telling them to do. So I don't really blame yeah. them. At the end of the day, it's people like uh, Anna per uh, Perna or whatever the heck her name is. People like her. It's people like that dumb idiot, the former president from Blizzard, who who said that, oh, you're getting a discount from from the the, the PS5 Pro 700 price. Yeah. It's people. So it's people like that. On top of that, they got people who have no idea what the hell they're doing. They have no idea what game, what the gaming mind is like, what gamers like, because they don't come from that world. Exactly. So they're going about it. They're so disconnected. It, it is, and it's just it's it's sad. And it's, it is. I never got. I never thought I would ever get to a point where I'm just like you know, gaming. I'm not really that excited about it anymore. No, I just play what I play. But yeah, the day of being hyped for releases is over for me. What's the point? Yeah, the like nine times out of ten, it's gonna be trash. Or it's going to need like 20 updates until it's not trash and then you just buy the ultimate edition like yeah that's that's bad that the last game that i was excited for was Re the resident evil 4 remake that was the last yeah. game i was excited about people keep asking me yeah. about metal gear solid 3 the remake and silent hill 2 and i'm just like i'm cautiously optimistic yeah. that's about as, yeah. as as good as these companies are going to get out of me man yeah, that's that's about it for me too. Yeah. And it's like I I swore off Nintendo even though I love Metroid. I love Metroid and I and I and, you know there are games that I like to play. I just I'm not going to give them any more of my money. If this is the bullshit no. bullshit that they're going to do, I I just I can't support that. And if more people did that shit, these companies would not do this crap. If y'all said no, we're not going to buy it, and I think that's where it's going. People are just saying, I'm not yeah. buying it. You know, because video, exactly. video game companies were at their best when their back was against the wall and they had to figure out something. Yep, exactly. But And you talk about, you know. Here well, we are. Yeah, the, the old saying that, that, you know, that my father says privilege is invisible to those who have it. So exactly when you got people who have this endless amount of cash coming in we can do whatever we want over inflated egos and look where yep. that got you and then they lose sight of it and they're not making stuff for the common man anymore yep. they're just making things line their pockets yeah and oh. it is sad it is very sad but rant over i'm sorry i went off on a tangent there folks. yeah that's no worries that's no worries. We'll, you know, we'll be here documenting it. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, when when we get we'll to live documenting the fall. When we when we get to episode 100 or 200 and all that. Yeah. <laughs> like, like the PS Yeah, episode 200, yeah. Like the PS6 is absolute trash. Yep. Holy crap. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. My, I hope that the the audio is not bad because holy crap um yeah that was twitch being weird to you too yeah my my bit rate tank i mean it tanked like it went mm -hmm. from yeah it went from around five thousand to like down to one thousand bit rate yeah mine's been tanking the entire stream it's twitch you know but anyway you know it's twitch oh well hopefully uh anyways you, hopefully you guys enjoyed the show today that is it for episode 13 of the hot takes podcast we will be back in two weeks for episode 14 yes we'll have another good show for you guys thank you to everyone that showed up i will not be streaming today because i'm tired and i want to sleep and i will be later i gotta check out yeah i get your sleep i will in a little bit but i gotta figure out what the hell twitch thinks it's doing but yeah. yes, thank you, Ken. I appreciate you always. Yes, Kelsey, it's, it's always a pleasure. Um, thank you to everyone that showed up. I will see y'all next time. Y'all take care. You guys take care. Bye.